grace of God that there is no foundation that can be laid than that foundation that has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. And I, when in the preparation of this and thanking God for uh, the revelation to be able to give the type of subject that I'm that I'm holding on to my faith because uh, Timothy and, uh, teaches us that in these last days that there are those that have itching ears. Uh, there are those that, that are not rooted and grounded in the faith of God like they should be. And the Bible teaches that um, they are tossed to and fro. They are uncertain in their decision as to stay with God or to be involved in something that is ungodly. We read the text today because we find out that today that there are ungodly men. And these ungodly men have a message that is contrary to the message of Christ. The Bible tells us in John 14 and 6, Jesus says these words, that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. And here we are today, we are saved and we love God. The Bible said that we are Christian. We are Christian not just by name, but we are Christian by our fellowship and relationship with Christ. We carry the title Christian uh, because we do the things that Christ did when he was going through troubled times. Our response is the same response that Christ gave when he was going through. We're doing the same thing. We have the same mindset. We have the mind of Christ. So therefore, we are called Christian. And so within these days, we are, the Christian believers are challenged by all of these new age religions that are popping up on the scene. These uh, type of, of religion that will that will literally make you believe that your life is your own and you can live it to the fullest the way that you want to live. In today's time, we have thousands of religions, thousands of faiths. We have different organizations within our governmental system uh, that we look at as being faith based where we bring uh, those of the Catholic uh, persuasion and, 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 and Judaism and uh, uh, all types of other religions, we try to culminate them and bring them and put them into, into one pot. But when I read John 14 and 6 to find out the bold statement and acclamation that Christ made, even in his time, there were other religions. And for him to stand and make a bold statement and to say to all of the other religions that I am the way, the truth, and the life in the midst of all of these uh, uh, different types of religions and, 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 and different types of, uh, of ideologies that people are, and, and they understand and know that people are vulnerable people. People that have opened themselves to any and to everything and they don't know what is the right thing to follow. They, they were actually uh, saying uh, and, and talking about the grace of God that God's marvelous that God's marvelous grace this is how they interpreted this that his marvelous grace uh, allows us to live immoral lives. His marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. Lives. And this is why I started off telling you that I'm holding on to my faith. Amen. To my faith. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so we, we, we understand that, that then that there were heretics that were around. They were passing themselves off, off as being Christians. Amen. They, they looked saved. They, they dressed Saved. They wore suits and ties, if you will. They, they, they looked as if they had a relationship with God, but they really didn't know who God was. The Bible said that they had a form of godliness, but they didn't have the power. They didn't have the relationship. They knew of God, but they did not know God. In this 21st century, we still have people that we can look at as being heretics that 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 they they really know 
and so understand because these heretics uh, were these, these were people uh, that that were knowledgeable people. They were knowledgeable people, and, and I, I, I love the word of God because the Bible teaches us that even uh, in these last days, that, that that the people that come up with this new stuff, that they are crafty people. They're not dumb people. They're they're, they're not stupid, but they are educated people. They are scholars, and these scholars are actually marketing an alternative brand of faith, an alternative brand of faith. And the church today is challenged with this alternative brand of faith. That's why I started out telling you that I'm holding on to my faith. I'm holding on to my faith. And this is what I'm trying to preach. And this is what I'm trying to teach to you today. That whatever new stuff comes up on the scene, you have to hold on to what you know is true about your God. The only testimony that you have to go off of is your experience with Christ, how he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You can't speak for nobody else. Amen. You can't stand up for nobody else. But the only thing that you know is that you were blind, but now you're able to see. And that it was Christ and the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. So this had to be addressed because with all of the grace of God and the liberty that God had given, they felt as if that they could live whatever way that they wanted to live. Yeah. And y'all have to hear me today truthfully because there are those of us that are in church and sitting in church, we have adopted the same mentality. Yeah. That we can do whatever it is that we want to do because we are living under grace. And so 2 Corinthians uh, 3 and 17 and it, it, it says now, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is there's liberty. There, 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 is, there is freedom. And I said this time and time again that even with our freedom there comes healthy limits and boundaries that God set for us. Amen, somebody? If you don't believe it, even in the natural, whenever you get a driver's license and you are out there on the road, amen, you are free to drive wherever it is that you want to drive. But with your license, understand there are healthy limits and boundaries. You can't get in the car and the speed limit is 25 on Parsons and you're doing 55. It's not going to work. Because what happens is, is that you'll have to pay because you will get caught and pulled over for speeding. Can I get a witness in here? And they understand because the fine is too high today to get a ticket. Some of y'all just say, man, you know, you just got one. Don't play. Tickets ain't $35 no more. They're not $25. They're $125, $135. So it's an expensive lesson to learn. So why not with the liberty that Christ has given us still live within the limits and boundaries that God has given us? And if the reason is, is so that we don't kill ourselves. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't kill yourself because with this freedom that God has given us, it does not mean that we're free to live immoral lives. It does not mean that we can do whatever it is that we want to do. It does not mean that you can still club on Saturday, come to church on Sunday. That's religion. You lack relationship with God. Because salvation, you don't turn on like a faucet on and off, and it's on on Sunday, and the rest of the day it's, just, it's, it's, it's off. That's not, that's not. And, and so this this is what this is what Jude is talking about because he notices that within within the church and within the lives of people, their lives were contrary to the will and the word of God. Right. You cannot preach your life, you cannot sing your life, you cannot play your life, you cannot pray your life. You have to live this thing because Christ is coming back after a church. Strange reason, amen. They happen to invade your space and, and they. 
they real close, you got to open up your mouth and say something because they're on your territory now. You're on my territory now. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you about Christ. That he's coming back again. This is why we have to hold on to this faith. He said, because I'm coming again. Coming again. There are going to be a whole lot of people that are going to go to hell by way of the church. Amen. 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 Because they're so liberated and free where they can do anything. This is what's wrong with society today. If we wanted to live without rules and, and guidelines and all that type of stuff. Y'all know everybody's free to do whatever they want to do. And look at the shape of the world. Jude tells us to encourage each other to hold on to the true faith. Yes. And encourages us to show more towards those whose faith is wavering because of false teaching. Because of false teachings. A lot of false teaching going on. But we have to hold on. Have to hold on to the truth. When Jesus told us that I, I am in the midst of all of these, uh, you have to know. Yes. You can't second guess this. I'm holding on to mine. Amen. Got mine. I'm, I'm holding on to mine. I don't care if these last days so much stuff is going on and, and, and everything that's going on is only confirming the word of God to yes, be true. Yes. That's it. Why turn and, and go to something else? That's right. Because it gives you liberty and freedom to do anything you want to do. Jew had to put him on front street. No, you can't, cannot live an immoral life and be saved too.